guys, let's go through the pin cushion tutorial. The first thing you, you want to do is to line up your clips after you've edited it. Um, make sure and put in a small cross dissolve in between the two clips. That cross dissolve needs to be uh, approximately two frames. Okay. Once you've done that, and then you can go into the color tab. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to set up using the Sapphire plugin. I'm going to set a keyframe, so you're going to run to record all of your, your keyframes as you go through this. So for S Blur Mode Curves, you want to set Z Distance to 1.7, Wrap X, Wrap Y to Reflect. This crop is for this clip only, so you don't need that ordinarily. I'm, I'm doing kind of a mirror effect in there, so that's why that's in there, so just ignore that. You go over four keyframes, set the Z distance to 1.15, two additional keyframes, 1.025, and then the final seventh keyframe to one. Okay, so that's so that you can zoom out. Now let's go into the S warp fisheye effect. So back, if you go back to the edge of the clip, you want to set that at 0.5. I'm uh, sorry, negative 0.5. Wrap X, wrap Y to reflect. Everything else is default. You go out 10 keyframes, and you reduce this to minus 0.1. You go out an additional four keyframes to minus 0 0.03 and then an additional four keyframes to zero to turn it off. All right, let's go to time warp. So S time warp RGB. In this case, you're going to need to customize this based on what looks right. There really is no answer and all I do, you don't have to typically play around with any of the settings. You just turn it on and off. So I've got it on here at the edge, and then I turn it off uh, approximately 10 keyframes out, okay? So that's when it first comes on, stays on all the way until the end of the clip, okay? And the way to turn it off and on is just to click this button here, and that will key a keyframe to turn it off or on. All right, the uh, brightness uh, is adjusted so that it gets this kind of a... Um, glow effect as it's going through its transformation. In this case, I turn it on at the um, 18th keyframe from the edge. So you can see here, I turn on and set the brightness to, uh, basically these are default values, so one, and then I crank it up for the brightness to two towards the end of the clip. And then for gamma, I, uh, I crank the gamma down to 0.5, and then at 18 keyframes out, it's back to the default value, which is just one. Everything else stays the same. Now, for gamma and brightness, you can also use your color wheels and so forth if you want to keyframe it using that. I just chose to use the, uh, the plug-in because it was easiest uh, to just do it from there. Okay, let's go on to the second clip where we're, we're zoomed in and we're kind of going out. All right, so for Mo curves at the, at the edge of your clip, you're going to start with 0.3. And again, you're going to want to make sure wrap X and wrap Y are reflect. You go out four keyframes to 0.9, an additional two to 0.98, and then additional one to back to one to turn it off. For warp fisheye, back at the edge of the clip, you want to set that to minus 0.5 and wrap X and wrap Y to reflect. Go out 10 keyframes, set that to minus 0.1, an additional 4 keyframes, minus 0.03, an additional 4 of the 18th keyframe to 0. Now in this case, time warp did not look right. <laughs> it didn't. The effect just didn't work for me, so I actually did not use it in that uh, in this this uh, for this clip. For brightness and uh, gamma, 
Uh, just like the previous one, we start out with two brightness, a brightness setting of two, and then we turn it off here with the brightness back to one at the end, and we use the dynamic keyframe. And then for gamma, I have a uh, setting of 0.5, and then again back to default of one at the end. So all of these are dynamic keyframes. This is how you do the pin cushion uh, to zoom out. Now let's do the pin cushion to zoom in. So we'll go to our clip here. We'll start here at the edge. And again, we'll need the same uh, plugins from Sapphire. So with mole curves, uh, you're going to start with 0.3 for the Z distance. Again, the wrap X and Y should be reflect. Go out four keyframes. Change the Z distance to 0.9. Go out an additional two, change the Z distance to 0.98, and then go out one additional keyframe and uh, set the Z distance to one. So that's so that you can zoom into your clip with the uh, pin cushion. For the warp fisheye, you're going to start with minus 0.5, wrap X and wrap Y to reflect. You go out 10 keyframes. Set that to negative 0.1. Go out four additional keyframes. And you set that to negative 0.03. And then an additional four keyframes to the 18th keyframe from the edge. Set that to zero. Okay. For the time warp effect, again, this is really based on... Uh, whatever features you have. In this case, I turned it off at the sixth keyframe. So you can see there I've got it off. And then on the seventh keyframe, I actually have it coming on. Okay? And that's why that's why you see these uh, the colors kind of coming into the image. And I turned it off right before it really started to look distorted. Okay? So that you get the effect without having too much of the effect. All right, let's go to the next one, which is brightness. Very similar with the other ones. I'm going to start here at the, at the uh, 18th keyframe. And again, that's to turn it on, basically, with the default settings. And then you go out to the edge, and you're going to set that up at 2 for the brightness. Sorry, let me get it. There we go, 2. Gamma is going to be the same way, where... I've got 0.5 at the edge of the clip before it transitions, and I have the default value at the 18th keyframe. Okay, let's go to the next clip, which is the clip that we're zooming into. And if I start at the edge of the clip, we're going to start with Mo Curves, which we will start off with, again, This you, you adjust this based on what works for your clip. In my case, 1.8 worked for the clip. Go out four keyframes, and then I reduce that down to 1.15. Go out an additional two keyframes to 1.025, and an additional two keyframes to one. Okay? Warp fish, fish eye. At the edge of the clip, we're going to start with negative 0.5. In this case, we went out four keyframes, and we ended up with, I'm sorry, 10 keyframes. And we went from negative 0.5 to negative 0.1, an additional four keyframes to negative 0.03, and then turn it off at the 18th keyframe. So just like the previous uh, uh, clip. For the time warp, in this case, I did set it. I started with it off, and then at the, uh, let's see, I think that's the fifth or sixth keyframe. Again, this is going to be customizable. Depending on how it looks, I turned it on. And then I turned it off roughly at the 12th keyframe. That's where it made sense for, for this clip. 
for brightness and, and gamma, just like our previous clips at the edge, at the transition, we set the brightness to 2. We set the gamma to 0.5. And then at the 18th keyframe, we turn them both off and, and set them both to the uh, default values of 1 for gamma and brightness back at 1. So those are both default. Okay, so that's it. I really encourage you to play around with that. Uh, some of these settings you're going to need to adjust based on what whatever clips you're transitioning and just just do what makes sense, what looks right. The only other thing I want to reiterate is when you've got the clips together, make sure you have the point or the two frames of cross dissolve in between them. Otherwise, it doesn't look very well. So I've got that here for the zoom in pin cushion as well as the zoom out pin cushion here. Okay. If you got any questions please leave a comment below. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. Peace.